Learning Adobe Illustrator can seem like a daunting task, but in this video series called Illustrator Basics, I'll break it down into simple and easy to understand blocks. Okay, in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the Pathfinder. I currently have the Pathfinder docked down here. This is what its little symbol looks like. If you don't have it docked anywhere and you're looking for it, you can find it by going up to the menus, go Window, Pathfinder, and wherever it is, it will open up for you. So the Pathfinder is a feature in Illustrator that I'd, I'd say it's probably something that I can't live without. It factors into pretty much all of my projects one way or another. I know in the comments, there's probably gonna be somebody who says, oh, well, you can use the Shape Builder instead of Pathfinder. And it's true. There's a lot of crossover between the two tools, but knowing the basics of the Pathfinder will help you decide when to use the Shape Builder and when to use Pathfinder. So to start with, let's look up here. This plus symbol that I've created out of two rectangles visually looks good when you're in preview mode, but if you switch over into outline mode, you'll see that the two rectangles still exist. So this can cause problems, say if you're building a logo and you don't wanna hand out something that is unfinished. So I'd like to combine these objects into one. And I do that by using the selection tools first and then the pathfinder. So I'd pick up both of these paths with the selection tool, and then I'd use one of the more common Pathfinder options, which is Unite. And if you click on it, and we switch back over to outline mode, you'll see what had happened. Instead of being two rectangles, you've now created that one path out of the two underlying shapes. There's no limit to how many paths were included in your original. You could have had multiple pieces all tied in at different sizes, different positions, and by selecting them all and uniting them together, you end up with one finished path. Now, like I said before, there's gonna be situations where you can achieve the same result with the shape builder. I'll show that to you quickly. All these little hover um, highlights that show up are going to add together these pieces. So to achieve the same result, you would have to highlight everything. And it's a visual way of achieving the same result. Some people may find it easier, but it was just a single click with the Pathfinder to do that. So that's why I like to use that in a lot of cases versus the Shape Builder. Anyway, on to the next feature. So here we have, again, two rectangles, but this time I've colored them a little bit differently to show you that one is in front and one is behind. Layer order is definitely going to play a factor in a lot of Pathfinder operations. So in this case, minus front, it does exactly what it suggests. It subtracts the front object from the rear object. In, in this case, unlike Unite, where you can unite multiple objects together, with minus front, you'll want to just work with two paths. You want to make sure that the path in front is the one that you want to subtract. You can use layer order or the layer palette to bring a shape to front and then your result is gonna be different because now you're subtracting the front shape versus before when we had the black shape in front. So that's handy for cutting paths and using one path as uh, a cutting shape to knock out the area that you're looking for underneath. The next feature that I'm gonna show you is the intersect option, and I'll use this a lot. I've created two basic circles here, and right now they're stroked, they're not filled, but if we pick both of those up and we use the intersect option, the areas of those circles that overlapped are now all that's left. So this is a really quick way to create a petal out of those two circles. And then you could do something like use the rotate tool and rotate this and create a cool shape like that, starting with the basis of the circles with the intersect tool. The final object or final feature here in the top row is exclude. And I have to be honest, it's not a feature that I've ever <laughs> used really. I, I don't remember a project where I've used the exclude option, but it does exactly what it says. The intersect option would have left you just with this middle shape, but instead this middle shape is empty. So any intersecting areas between your two paths will be deleted and you'll be left with the end results on the outer borders. In this case, they're not actually connected, they're just grouped. So if you ungroup them with Command-Shift-G, you would be able to pull those elements apart with the middle area being deleted with the 
exclude option. The lower row of Pathfinder options get a little bit more complicated and there's some crossover between them that you need to be aware of. So the original shape up here that I merged together using Unite, there's a feature at the bottom here called Merge. And Merge sounds very similar. If you were to have two objects filled with the same color, stacked, one on, stacked on top of each other, and you use the Merge feature, it's gonna look like the exact same result as the Unite feature. But where the Merge feature becomes different is when you have different color fills. So in this case here, we've got overlapping black circles in the background and then overlapping gold circles in the foreground. If we use the merge option, the gold circles in the foreground merge together and the black circles in the background merge together, but there's also a cut that happens. The gold circles that are overlapping here have left a void underneath. And there has also been a series of fills created or series of shapes created without any fills. So Depending on what you were going for, you may want to go back in and delete all of these empty elements, but you'd be left with the same shapes underneath that you had created with the merge function. So that could come in handy when you're trying to condense artwork that had been overlapping. You can see the original result before I did the merge. There's a lot of paths here that are intersecting with one another and then after you merged it with the Pathfinder, it's cleaned up and you get the, the paths underneath are deleted and knocked out. So that's a handy feature there to know. A lot of times with the Pathfinder, I would have a pattern and I would want to apply that pattern inside of another shape. So let's pull up the circle tool here. And this is what I'm talking about. I want these bars to be basically a fill inside of this circle. And you would think that, okay, I could select all of these and use the intersect option. And you've probably seen this error if you've tried to use the Pathfinder before. The filter produced no results. Please select two overlapping paths. Because the path in the background is multiple individual pieces, this Unite feature here will not work. So there's a bunch of workarounds for that. And sometimes if my pattern can connect at an end like this, I will select all of these bars, unite them together. And now because we're dealing with two paths instead of a series of paths in the background, the intersect option will have the result that we were going for. Alternatively, if your pattern can't connect out at the end like this and you're looking to fill this circle with these shapes here, we can create a clipping mask. So this is a different feature, but it, it will eventually tie back into the Pathfinder if you stick with me here. So we're gonna use the top shape, the circle that we created, to create a clipping mask of the pattern underneath. So press Command-7 on your keyboard with everything selected. Now, if we jump into outline mode, you'll see that the circle is still visible and these bars are still visible. The circle has just hidden the bars that are outside of the circle. But now there's a Pathfinder option that can reduce this back to the effect that we were going for, and that is the crop function. So the crop function will cut your layer mask and will leave you with just the bars inside of the circle the way that we were trying to achieve. The crop function also works before you apply it as a layer mask. But what will end up happening is the individual empty spaces will show up as their own path. So it's an extra step because you would have to go in and delete these empty shapes if you weren't looking to include those. So you can get to the same result, but the clipping mask helps with the crop function. There's another function in the bottom row that is just an opposite version of what's in the top row, and that's minus back. So instead of doing minus front, you can do the minus back option and it saves you maybe some hassle of sending objects forward or backwards in the layer order. It can just be a little bit quicker. I don't know why it's buried in that bottom row because it's basically a mirror of this top function up here. And the last feature of the Pathfinder that I'll demonstrate is the divide feature. So if you pick up two paths and you use the divide feature here and then you ungroup the result, 
you'll see that all of the individual pieces of those original two paths have been chopped up. So it's basically just slicing across any of the intersection points, but it's not deleting anything. It's leaving you with the results here. So this could come in handy if you're looking to change the color of part of a shape and maybe apply a different fill over here. So using the intersection of the paths and then dividing it with the pathfinder is an easy way to start to apply custom color palettes to a project where you started with just two basic paths and now we've chopped it up and applied a different look to it. So that's it. There's my high level rundown of the pathfinder in Illustrator. It's something that I can't live without. It's part of my workflow every day. And it's definitely one that I'd recommend you practice with because the more comfortable you get using it, the more efficient you'll be when you're working on projects.